Hi, in this lesson we'll be seeing Oracle Ibsen Suite single node and multi node environments. First, we'll be seeing what is a single node architecture, then what is multi node architecture, and finally we'll be seeing what is a split configuration. So, what is a single node installation in Oracle Ibsen Suite? As you can easily understand, a single node installation is nothing but installing both Oracle Ibsen Suite application and database tiers on the same machine or the same node which means all the processes and servers related to application tier and the database tier run on the same system which means if this system is down obviously both of the application tier and database tier will not be available since it is only one machine you will not be requiring you won't be requiring any load balancer as well and it's not really recommended to use this kind of environment for productions and also there is no high availability in this in this configuration. If one system is down, you'll be losing both application tier and database tier as well. This is one of the typical configurations of multi node environment where I'm using two systems. One is one system or one machine or one virtual machine is basically used for the application tier and the other is for the database tier. Which means when the user is trying to log in into the Oracle applications or eBusiness suite, the login page is basically served for this system. And when the user provides the credentials, all the database connections will go to the other system because your database is running on a different system. So this is nothing but a two node architecture or multi node architecture. Now, this also doesn't offer any high availability because the application tier is having only one node and it's a single point of failure. If this node is down, then obviously your entire Oracle Vision Suite is also going to be down. Even in this kind of environment, you will not be requiring any load balancers because you are not going to balance any requests here. The only advantage which you will be having here is to separate the performance of application tier and database tier. So that way you can, you need not worry about the overhead of database on the application tier and vice versa. In several con several customers, you us usually see this kind of an environment because all the customers might not have Oracle database availability options such as a data guard or rack for example. And even for application tier, lot of customers do not use multiple application tier nodes as well. Now, this is basically a multi-node configuration in high availability environments. So what happens here basically is I'm using totally four nodes or four systems or four virtual machines to run my Oracle Business Suite. Two systems are for the application tier and two are for the database tier. And we're going to place a load balancer to balance the requests that are coming from the users or the desktop tier. Let's say for example, the user wants to access erp.domain.com or ebs.domain.com this load balancer will receive all the requests it will work with these application tier to find out the number of users that are connected to these application tier nodes and it will try to balance the requests based on the load of these application tier nodes and also on the database tier since it is a rack that is real application clusters we can have several nodes actually on the database tier as well which will load balance the requests, incoming requests from the application tier. In such environments, obviously, you'll be having high availability because if one of the node goes down, still there is the other node which will serve the user request. Now, let us see what happens if one of the application tier nodes is down. As you can see now, this application tier node is down, which means the load balancer will stop sending all the requests to this application tier node. And also, obviously, all the connections that are going to go from application tier to the database tier also will not be present from this node. But the user will still type the same URL erp.domain.com because the load balancer will now send the request to only the available application node. And the available application node will continue to use the databases, the database systems. If let's say, for example, even one of the database system is down, still on the database level also, we'll be having the high availability with the help of Oracle Rack. So this obviously, this type of configuration is used in, in customers who are 
basically affording the availability. It obviously has a lot of impact on licensing as well because there are a lot of licenses involved here. You have to license all the components on the application tires and also all the components on database tier. For example, you'll be requiring rack additional license and also the license for a database enterprise edition on both these nodes as well. And similarly for the web logic, you'll be having you'll require license for number of processors on this node and also this node. So the customer, if they are going to invest on high availability, yes, then this is the best configuration. Now, there is one more configuration called split configuration. Usually, you won't see this type of configuration in real time. Of course, there are very, very few customers who might still use the split configuration, but I would not personally recommend, and Oracle obviously recommends to use it as a normal configuration where you'll have the same platform for both application and database tiers. In a split configuration, what we have is one, one of the applica both application tier not running the same operating system. For example, you can see in this sample architecture, you can see that application tier is using AX platform operating system, whereas database is running on Linux platform. So this is called a split configuration. Now let us have a look at the system from the backend. There is a table called FND underscore nodes. And this FND underscore nodes contains the details of all the systems that are part of, or all the nodes that are part of our Clip business suite. Now, when I ran this select start from FND underscore nodes, ignore the second line that is authentication. What you have to look at is this one. There's only one node called apps. And if you observe the columns carefully, you can see that all these support columns, let's say, for example, the concurrent processing, forms, web tier, admin server, and also the database also here, you can see support DB, all are pointing to yes, which means that this one system, a single node, is basically used for database as well as the application. This is a typical configuration of a single node system. So what happens if you have something called, let's say, additional node called DB? In that case, what happens is all these columns of application tier will be yes in apps node. And on DB node, you'll be having support DB equal to yes. And support DB equal to will be no for apps application node. So this is basically a typical configurations, what we can see in real time for single node, multi-node and split node.